drop-offs can add a load of fun to your riding, but tackling them can be pretty daunting at first. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to hit those drops with confidence. When I first come to a drop that I've not ridden before, I like to stick my bike at the side of the trail and have a quick visual inspection of the drop itself before I commit to riding it. Now this one I can see has a really good run up to it, so I can set myself up really good. It's a slight turn to it, it's a bit of a hip. And I notice on the edge of the drop, there's actually a rock that's gonna kick the bike up into the air. So with a good amount of speed, I'm probably not gonna have to put a lot of effort into the bike to make the landing. I've looked at the distance that I need to make and I'm thinking about the speed that I need to enter it as well. And then looking at the landing, I can see the landing's pretty wide, it tunnels down at the end. On the right hand side, there's a big rut, and on the left hand side, it's a nice smoother landing. So I know when I come into this, I need to aim to that left hand side of the landing. And looking further down the trail, I can actually see there's quite a sizable jump. So I know if I case this drop, then I'm probably not, not going to have enough speed to clear that jump. So if this doesn't work, it's all about piecing that next uh, bit of trail together in the puzzle and making sure it's all going to work from the landing of this drop. Then I've got that all into account. I'm going to head up the trail, roll into this, and hopefully send it nicely into that landing. Now we've all been there, we come skidding to the edge of the trail and not committing to a drop, slamming your brakes on and sitting there going, uh, maybe, maybe not. But there's a few things you can actually do to commit yourself to this drop. You just need to have confidence in your abilities as well, which you've practiced already. Take it in relation to a drop you've hit before. It's that little step up the ladder next, and you should be confident in your skills to hit this. Next up, you might want to visualize yourself actually doing it, almost like you're in a video segment. It's quite a good way of doing it. And lastly, it's about telling yourself that you've actually done this drop before. That way it kind of triggers your brain to allow you to do it. But I usually have a five run run up on this, so if I can't commit to sending within five run-ups, I usually walk away, come back to it another day. Right, I want to talk a little bit about squash and pop. Now we're not talking about drinks, we're talking about an invaluable technique that can add a little bit of pop to your drops, or squash where it comes into effect if you're coming in too fast. It means you can squash the bike down into the landing. And the pop technique is all about creating extra distance if you're coming in too slow. Last minute you can perform a big bunny hop and gain those few more inches or feet to get into the landing. Right, so let's talk about the squash technique. Now this one comes in if you're coming too fast into a drop. You're about two or three bike lengths away and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna over jump that landing. Now this is what you need to do. You need to squash down into the bike. So as soon as you come into the takeoff, we're not gonna be popping at all off of this. We're gonna be getting our weight down nice and low into the bike and trying to make the trajectory between the takeoff and that landing as low as possible. So you almost need to squash and skim off that takeoff. If you were to pull up, you're gonna go far, you're probably gonna land flat so get down nice and low and make that point between a and b the top of the landing as short as possible and the least trajectory possible right so the pop technique this is if you're coming in too slow to the drop this technique involves a big bunny hop so you're going to come in bunny hop off the lip and that's going to give you a lot more distance and height and hopefully make that trajectory into the landing perfect it's also really worth taking a look on the takeoff for things such as this this has got a nice rock kick so i can emphasize my bunny hop by hitting that by slightly changing my line therefore i'm going to pop off there and get a lot more distance than i would do if i was just going to do a flat style bunny hop So what speed do you actually need to attack that drop at? Well, that's gonna vary, of course, from the size of the drop and how far distance out the landing is for that. Now, a really good way of doing that is actually standing on the midpoint of the drop and looking at the takeoff and looking at the sweet spot on the landing and working out that trajectory between point A and point B and working out the speed and the drop of the bike. It's also worth noting if there's a kick out on the, take, on the takeoff, that's gonna add the trajectory to that. So you can come in a bit slower to a drop with a kicker on, whereas this is slightly downhill, it's quite tech running and there's quite a kick to it as well. So you can come in quite nice and slow and pick the front wheel up. We're quite lucky with this drop because the actual landing does meet the drop itself. But there is an actual sweet spot, which is around where I am with the landing, where it's actually getting steeper. So if you can get to a nice steeper point of the landing, it's gonna be a lot smoother than hitting that flat bit. So work out your speed between entry point A and B, come in with a couple of dummy runs, work out that landing spot and where you're gonna take off and go from there.
Right, so the over jump, this is one of the nastiest things that can happen when you hit a drop. It's basically you've come in with way too much speed and you've over jumped the landing, meaning you're going to land to flat. Now there's a few ways you can deal with this. The way I like to deal with it is to get the front wheel high, almost like sailing through the air, kind of like in the wheelie position. And then upon landing, you put the back wheel down first and you're dissipating all that energy through the back wheel, let, then let the front wheel a touchdown to again dissipate even more energy. Thing is, if you come in flat or slightly front wheel first, you're going to get all that energy going to travel forward and try and chuck you over the handlebars. So, the best way is to come in back wheel first, land, absorb all that energy, and lay off the brakes as well. If you touch the brakes, as soon as you land, the wheels are going to want to turn. If you're holding the brakes, it's just going to act like a catapult and probably send you straight out the front door. So there you go, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video all about my personal tips on how to drop off and drop off techniques. But if you've got anything you want to add, don't forget to get involved and drop us some in the comments box below. But if you want to stick around and check out another video, check out Drop Off Mistakes, that one's playing over here. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Smash the globe to subscribe to EMBN. And whilst you're there, hit that notification bell to receive a notification every time we do an upload to make sure you're not missing out. Cheers.